I want you, as I begin today, to to try for a moment to call to mind a time in your life when you had to endure a situation that you thought was unfair, maybe even unjust. Maybe it was a situation that you had to persevere through for some length of time. Maybe you're still persevering through it today. And maybe there was one specific person or a few specific people that you could name that were the driving force in making this situation what it was or still is. As you're calling those situations to mind, I want to ask you to do two more things very briefly in your mind. I want you to try to distill in your head exactly what was at issue in that situation, exactly what the injustice was. And I want you to recall what you did to get through that period in your life. How did you manage? How are you managing? What got you through? I've been preaching on what Jesus wants to teach us about faith in the parables for a little over a month now and I'll come to the end of this series next week, and one of the things that struck me the most in preaching through this series is just how much with Jesus, faith always seems to touch down in the core experiences of our human life. Faith is not just some add-on to life or some facet of the human journey that only relates to extraordinary experiences. It's something that always lands smack dab in the center somehow. The kind of faith that Jesus is talking about in these parables is, is faith for when you feel small and powerless. Faith in relation to our day-to-day priorities. Faith in what we do with our pains and our joys. Faith in the people we love and how we go about searching for them. I said before that even though Jesus tends to teach about faith through parable, Jesus really isn't abstract at all when it comes to faith. I think Jesus has a way of taking for granted that all of our struggles as human beings have a spiritual dimension to them. We are spiritual beings. When we face challenges in our lives, those things affect our spirits. And when we meet with success in our lives, those times affect our spirits as well. And Jesus has this way of bringing us around to all of those different places in our lives through these parables and asking us to consider where all of those situations call forth faith in our lives. He's not going to let us forget that we are spiritual creatures. And He's not going to let us forget either that every single day of our lives, one way or another, puts different sorts of spiritual challenges in front of us. We're the only question of any real importance becomes how are you going to face this issue in faith today? It's not just the low times, it's the high times and all of the in-between times because you and I are spiritual creatures and our experiences of life affect us in that way. Jesus, Jesus is in the business of calling out our faith right in the thick messiness of our everyday realities. The parable of the dishonest manager that we're reading this morning tells us plainly at the outset that this is a parable about, quote-unquote, the need to pray always and not to lose heart. It's a parable about a lot of things, really. At the very end of this passage, Jesus asks this haunting question, when the Son of Man comes, will He find faith on the earth? So it's also a parable about faith on a level. Faith and prayer. But the parable itself, in the middle of these two lines, is about corruption. And about injustice as well. The 
The judge is a key government official in this city. We're meant to understand that this is the only person in this scenario that's able to make fairness and justice a reality in this context. And he's indifferent to it. The judge, the person in charge of justice, is indifferent to justice. And it's not unimportant here that the person asking for justice is a widow. You see, in ancient Israel, they recognized that widows were an especially vulnerable class of people. They were to be looked after and taken care of. And it was a special priority to make sure that the widows and the orphans and the strangers from other countries, as people who faced an added level of danger in society, that they be looked after. And it be a special priority of this covenanted people of God to look after these vulnerable classes. Look again at how often they show up in the laws in the book of Deuteronomy. Read again the book of Ruth and how Ruth, both a foreigner and a widow, took care of her mother-in-law Naomi, a widow. The judge in the parable was indifferent not only to justice in general, but to justice for this widow, which is meant to tell us in no uncertain terms what the character of this man is like. Just Judges who are indifferent to justice do away with justice altogether, you see. Justice is not something that can be exercised selectively. Justice has to be consistent and based on principle rather than any one person's whim. Otherwise, it's not justice. It's power. The judge has no interest in justice. And so all that's left is power. The widow has to beg. And it's purely a matter of whether she annoys this judge enough to get him to act the way he should act. And when he finally grants her justice, it's not because he's become a just man all of a sudden. His only reason for doing so is that he wants to make her stop bugging him. Now I want you to imagine what this period of time in this widow's life must have been like. To be in the right, to have a case against an opponent who had wronged her. The presumption is that she is entitled to the justice she seeks. To be vulnerable. To be endangered even more somehow in an already vulnerable situation in life. And her only recourse, her only hope is to come to this judge and say, help me. Help me. And he won't. I asked you to call to mind some experience in your life when you had to deal with an injustice. Maybe even a prolonged period of time. Maybe, maybe you never got the justice. Do you know what this widow might be going through? Do you know what's keeping her up at night? If you, if you have to go through a time like this for any length of time at all, there are danger, it, dangers that it poses to your spirit. It's a spiritual matter to have to face such a time. A person facing these circumstances for any length of time can lose hope and die on the inside. A person who's lost hope is a person that is forgetting how to live with that glimmer of joy and expectation in their life. A person facing these circumstances can quickly become cynical about life, which is its own kind of spiritual cancer. When the injustices we face make us give up on the idea of justice, then we become the newest crop of recruits to this team that this just judge is playing for, unjust judge is playing for. It's a cancer on our spirit, and it's a cancer on our whole world to be taken down that road. So what is this woman to do? How can she navigate such a time as this? How did you navigate those times in your life? 
Jesus is saying in this parable that surviving these times in our lives, these experiences of injustice have something important to do with prayer and with faith. And it's not something that's as simple as a blanket charge just to pray and and have faith because as I said, there are dangers along that road that need to be looked out for and that need to be avoided. There are spirit-killing dangers in a world of injustice. And if you haven't had to, to look out for them yet in your life, then chances are you will because the world we live in isn't in danger of becoming a just place anytime soon. There are still broken humans in this world and there are more and more of them every single day. No, the call to prayer and to faith being relayed to us through this parable is a call to make it our spiritual discipline to look for God for justice. It's a call away away from the road of cynicism and hopelessness and their spirit-killing potential. And it's a call toward a deeper and more profound hope and trust in God. And a deeper recognition that that only God is perfectly just and that only God is capable of bringing all the complex webs of injustice in this world into order. We can, of course, seek justice and be active in working and advocating for the cause of justice in our world, but that was last week's parable. The lesson of this week's parable has to do with how we bear up spiritually in the face of injustice. And in the, and in the face of all those times when we have to, to face the heart challenges of times like those. Whatever other actions those times call forth from us, they call forth faith. And a particular kind of faith at that. They call forth a faith and a closeness to the God who is good, to the God who is truly just to the God who loves us and draws us close so that we might be closer to God. What faith really is at the end of the day is is God's way of drawing us closer to God's self. All of our times of difficulty in this world are, are spiritual events. May they draw us closer to our refuge and our strength and And give us an even deeper understanding and an even deeper trust that through all of these times, through all of our disappointments, through all of this world's brokenness, God is still breathing fresh breaths of strength for today, bright hope for tomorrow in our hearts in the form of faith. And so to the God who puts faith in our hearts, who calls us and gives us strength and who bears us up in the weakest times of our lives with new hope. We say thanks be to God. Amen.